I'm going to show you how I designed this particular thumbnail completely from scratch. As you go along this journey, I'll be giving out some pro tips and I'll also explain to you the decisions I made and why I made those decisions. So without any further ado, let's dive in. So we are going to use Photoshop for this particular tutorial, but if you want us to use any other software for this same thumbnail, all that you have to do is to comment down below in the comment section the particular software you want me to design this same thumbnail with. Let's say if you want me to design this same thumbnail with Canva, just type do this with Canva. As simple as that and I'll record a video showing you how I did it with Canva. So here in Photoshop, we need to set up our dimensions for our project. So we head over to new file. And then over here, we set up our dimensions. So what I do is that for thumbnail designs, I mostly use the web large. In your case, you may not find it here in a recent tab. So all that you have to do is to come to the web tab. And over here, you're going to see it here, a web large. And you click on it just like that. And as you can see, everything will change into the dimensions of the web large. When you select the web large, you don't have to change any setting here. All that you have to do is to click on create. Okay, so after the dimensions have been created, I have to import all the files that I use for the background. Okay, so basically, I'm going to design the background and we move on to the other ones. So we're going to import everything. Let's open the folder where the backgrounds are. I mean, where the images are, the flyers I use. Select the first one, press and hold on shift on the keyboard and select the last one and then import it in Photoshop. So let's minimize this one. Let's import everything here in Photoshop. That's how you import work things in Photoshop. I hope you keep that in mind and then you click on it they will be posted one after the other so you click and click and click until everything that you selected has been placed successfully in photoshop so that's how it works so we are going to place everything that we copied here in photoshop so we select the first one like this and then we press and hold on shift on the keyboard and select the last one to select everything and then we control minus minus to zoom out we want to put this one at one side like this because for now we are not going to do anything on the artboard we are going to work on the flies we imported so that we will bring it back to the artboard to continue working on it in the artboard and then let's push this one to at this side okay so all that i'm coming to do is to just arrange them let me enlarge this one to fit the sizes of the ones that i am using so let me gonna enlarge this one as well to fit the sizes i'm gonna use yeah basically i think it looks good okay let me click on the check mark basically yeah okay so i'm gonna take this ones one after the other to arrange them so i'm gonna do this pretty quick one so that i'm not gonna waste your time Okay, so basically this is what I was talking about. We are going to group everything. So we select the first one as I did earlier on. And then I press and hold on shift on the keyboard and select the last one. And then I press on control G on the keyboard to group them. Yeah, so we can also group them like flyers. Flyers. Enter on the keyboard. And then we are going to bring everything here on the main artboard. Yeah, as you can see, when I brought it in the main artboard, it clipped it automatically. So control T to transform the images, reduce the size a bit. Something like this looks good. Position them nicely behind like this. Okay, I think it looks good. Let's push it upwards a bit. Yeah, I think it's okay. And now we need a gradient on it, a gradient overlay, so that we have some of the part being a little bit darker and then some of the part being lighter. So we need a rectangle for this. So we come here and then select the rectangle too. And then we draw a rectangle to cover the entire canvas. Okay, so when you get the rectangle, we come up here and then you take out the stroke and then you select the fill. And for the fill, you choose the gradient here and the gradient here, you open up the basics. Click on the drop down here to open up the basics. So you select one of these, but specifically the middle one. It's from dark area to transparent. So that's what I'm talking about. So you can also adjust where you want the transparency to start from, where you want the dark mode to start from. Over here, I'll push this one here a bit. 
and push this one here a bit i think i'm making it two ways no come back come back yeah come back uh, come back a little bit okay i think this one just should come back a bit yeah so i think this one is better for me i need the image that i use for the flyer so i go to file place embedded okay so here is the image thumbnail pick one import it here in photoshop and then i'll enlarge it it fits where i want it to be so one of the tricks for designing a thumbnail is that you don't just put elements at anywhere let me show you the grid i use let's go to view let's go to new guide layout so as you can see you set to custom and then you select this number here to three number three you check this check this The reason for this gate is that it is believed that viewers pay attention to this part where the lies meet this one two three four so that is why they recommend this type of grid okay so let's continue our work so let's position this image right here and one thing is that this image was not like this when i shot it so i edited it a bit so in case you want me to show you how i edited this picture to get this kind of rondo not the best but if you want me to show you how i did it you can also comment down below and i'll do a video on that for you we need the test so to select the test tool, you can use your mouse cursor to come down here and click on the T here. Or you can use the shortcut, which I always use. So I press T on the keyboard and as you can see, the test tool has been highlighted. And I just click on it, then I start right. So first type design. Click on the check mark, position it. The font I use is Argentum Sounds. It's a free font, so I'll leave the link in the description where you can download that. Okay, so after typing, I'll select the layer of the test, I mean the design here, and I'll go to FX, and for FX, I'll go to Gradient Overlay. And then I'll open up the gradient like this. So my reason for using the gradients is not to change the colors that much. All that I want to do is to change the shades of the white I'm using. I'll select plain white for the top and for the down. I'm gonna go into the red sheets i think yeah this looks good okay okay and then okay again and then we are going to add a stroke so you go to fx and then we go to stroke and then over here we can adjust the color of the stroke with this one let's go down a bit uh, down a bit oh no let's come up you can choose any color you prefer and then let's reduce the size to let's say three three yeah three looks good and then the opacity so me, I want it to be 100%. The position, you want it to be center. Center means some will show outside the test, some will show inside the area of the test. And then the size will be three, and then everything stays constant. And then I'll press on OK, and then I duplicate it. So you can also duplicate it by pressing on Alt on the keyboard, and then you press and hold on Shift as well. So both of them press and hold on them, and then you drag it down. So you change the test. I'm gonna change this to like this. Then we bring these people down. Um, I like working in groups, so let me group my layers. Control G to group this one and call them main tests. Main test. Enter. And now the picture is just like that. Let me group this one to as a background. So J, Control J, double click on it, and then background. Okay, so now we have our main test, and then we have our background, and I have the terminal pick as well. The picture is too small for me, so let me enlarge it a bit. Control T, Control minus minus to zoom out. Let me enlarge the picture a bit. Let's bring this the main test here. I don't know if you study the thumbnail very well. I made it in a way that this part of the test entered my fingers, and then this part, my thumb covered some part of the S. I'm going to show you all that. We need some bit of shadow to make it pop better. So go to FX, go to drop shadow. Okay, so. 50 will be good or even what is this if it's okay so let me just keep it like that okay so at this point we bring in the arrow that i use so we go to file place embedded and then we select the arrow and as you can see it is not a white arrow it is a black arrow so this is how i change the color of the arrow in case you find yourself in this particular situation and then position it to a control minus zoom out and then make sure that you have selected the layer of the image that you have imported in my case this arrow you right click on it and then you rasterize the layer then after rasterizing you come up here and then you select let me right click on this one for you to see magic one two magic one two is selected you click on this one i mean you click on this part and you press and hold or shift on the keyboard and you add this part as well 
then you add this path as well and as you can see there is this small path as well that has not been selected so you click on this one to select them as well perfect and then you press on backspace on the keyboard to clean up all those areas Control D to the select so i'll just click on the move to you can also press on v for the move to and now we're going to turn this arrow to white and then add some strokes to it so we're going to change the color so you select it and then come to fx and to color overlay and then to white click on the check mark and then also the stroke i'm going to make it red so we increase the size a bit and this time around the position will be inside so we'll bring it inside a bit a to be good and make it more red that's one look good oh perfect click on ok ok ctrl t transform decrease it a bit and you position it well right click flip horizontal and then you bring it to this edge the arrow will change so when it changes to that curve arrow means you can rotate it so you rotate it i think the stroke is too much and the size too is too small so let me increase the size a bit and now let me decrease the stroke so double click on the stroke and then this one will pop up increases to like five yeah, five will be good. Okay. I left is one thing. How I managed to edit this part to seem like the test was in my hand. And then how I managed to put my thumb off the test. So let's do that. Position the test well. Now that you have positioned your test at the point where you want it. Resume it. Or in my case, I'm going to select my image. Let me zoom out again. And now my image layer is selected over here. So I'll come up here and then I'll right click at this part and I'll select quick selection tool. And now whilst my thumbnail pick layer is selected, I'll select the part that I want it to come out. So let me zoom in. So you press and hold on all to the select and then you release the all to select. After selecting them, I'll right click and I'll go to layer via copy. For the layer via copy, it will automatically create a layer over here. That is the layer one. So you take this layer and then you put it on top of the main test like this. So as you can see, my thumb is now on the design this and then some part of this, I don't know if you can see clearly. Let me push the test back for you to see it clearly. You see, it is inside our kit. And then this part, you can clean them up. So you can select the layer. You click on this one to add a layer mask and then you select the layer mask. Then you press on E for the eraser to Then you clean up this area. What I also did was I added some shadows to make it more realistic. Press on this one to create an empty layer on top of this one and then select the brush to B for brush and then you come down here, you right click to see that you are using the soft round brush, select the hardness to zero and then for the size I think it's okay. Control Z to undo that. Click on this part. Let me bring this one down. Powerful. That's what I want to see. I don't know if you can see what I did. Let me bring it back and show you the difference. And I brought it back. You saw the difference. So this is what I wanted to see. Then I'll click here to run. And then this part too as well and i'm gonna reduce the opacity a bit to like eight so to change the opacity you can just press on the numbers on the keys so if you want 20 you just press on two if you want 50 just press on five if you want 90 just press on nine but if you want a single value let's say nine or five you press on zero five i want zero nine zero nine that is the shortcut for adding opacity okay so this is a thumbnail that i did for one of my videos and in the video i showed the process that pro designers use when they are designing so if you want to watch that video then here it is let's get on it to learn more until next time quench not your creativity peace